Hey everybody, Nick Busey here, and today I'm going to show you how to install version 0.7 of HomeLab OS. If you're not aware, HomeLab OS is a set of scripts that helps you install and self-host over 100 services on your own server. So if you go to homelaboos.com, you can kind of see some of the features. We have Mail Server, Nextcloud, The Lounge, Bitwarden, MB, Plex, Minecraft servers, music streaming services, RSS readers, over a hundred different things you can enable. So there's a lot going on there. You can see a list of different available software by clicking the documentation link and available software. Here's, here's all our categories. So calendaring and contacts management, paperless uh, for document management, all, all, all sorts of things in here. So let's go ahead and get started with installation. So you want to go through and read all these warnings when you're getting set up, all the requirements and optional items describe different setups you can have as far as DNS, port forwarding, cloud bastion server, S3 account for backups, this is an important one, you're definitely going to want to do that. But let's get started here with getting it installed. So we're going to copy the one-liner setup and I'm going to SSH into a DigitalOcean droplet I set up for this. Ubuntu 2004, and we will just paste in the one-liner, and it's going to go ahead and set up and configure a lot of things. I've already primed this server, so it went a lot faster than it will on its first build for you, but it shouldn't take too long. Um, I don't need a password for, it's asking me, what is the password the user you SSH with needs for sudo access? I'm logged in as root, so I don't need a password. So I'm just going to hit enter. What is the default username you'd like created as an admin on the various Home Lab OS services? I'm going to say Nick. What is the default password you would like for this account? We're going to use password, something very secure for this demo. And the domain we will do v07.homelaboos.com. And current valid email address for the admin. This is required for Let's Encrypt HTTPS certificates. We're not going to need those for this demo, so I'm just going to hit enter to skip that. So that's going to go ahead and set up everything it needs on the server itself. Things like Python, Docker, um, if you enable Tor, Right there, it would set up and configure Tor. That's a nice way to not have to worry about domain names and port forwarding because the Tor network handles that all for you, which is nice. It can be a little slow, but it's a, it's a decent option. Then it's going to install necessities and nice to have, things like Vim, Glances, Git, um, you know, just stuff that you need to work on a server effectively. Once this is done with its first run, which should be pretty soon here, it's going to spit out some more directions for us to follow. It's going to tell us to CD into the installation directory. And then from there, we can enable services that we want to enable and run make. And that will go ahead and deploy the services that we want. So you can see here it's spitting out a lot of red. That's nothing to be afraid of. It's just the way that Ansible looks for this particular part of the script. These are all the different services that we do not have enabled. That's why they're red. If they were enabled, they would be either green or blue or yellow, depending on their status. So we're almost here to the end of the list of services. And now we're done. So you can see here, here's the directions it's telling us. You can check the status of Organizer. Organizer is a dashboard service that 
we enable by default just so something is running so you can see things are working. Um, to enable more services, run cd into the, home, the install directory and then run make set service name dot enable true. So let's say we'll use the example here make set mini flux dot enable true. It will go ahead and flip that configuration bit for us and then all we have to do is type make. You can run make as many times as you like it's not gonna hurt anything in fact anytime you make a change you need to run make to have that change propagate out to the server. If you make a change to an existing service you have to run make restart just so you're aware of that. <clears throat> The reason we do that is because we don't want all our services restarting every time you run make. If you're running dozens of services, there's no need to restart them all. So you can run make restart or make restart underscore one and then the name of the service and it will just restart that particular service. You can also run make update instead of just make and that will force a restart as well. Okay, so you can see here we're back to where we were last time. It's running through our list of services, but we've enabled Miniflux, so when we get to the M's here, you should see a different uh, different color pop out for Miniflux. There it is, skipping. So it's not going to try and stop Miniflux. This is the part of the scripts where it stops anything that's disabled. So if you disable a service and run make, it will bring that service down for you automatically. So while this is going, I'm going to go ahead and set up our DNS real quick. So we're just going to create a record for star.v07.homelabOS, and we'll point it at our 161 address. So the reason I did this is because earlier you remember I set v07.homelabOS.com as our domain. So HomeLabOS automatically uses the service name and appends that on the front of your domain as a subdomain. So for organizer, it will be organizer.v07.homelabos.com and for miniflux, it will be miniflux.v07.homelabos.com. So if I create an asterisk.v07.homelabos.com pointing to my IP, then any subdomain I go to will get to the right place. So we'll go ahead and add that listing and this says it's done. So we can do a system control status miniflux. And it looks like it's running. So if we go now to miniflux.v07.homelabos.com, there it is. Sign into miniflux. I think I can even sign in with a default username and password we said earlier. Yep, there we go. So from here I can add subscriptions to various feeds, like if I wanted to add nickbusey.com RSS feed. I have one, right? Hmm, maybe there's not a link to it. <laughs> Alright, put that on the to-do list. Uh, anyway, that's one service. Uh, organizer should be up and running as well. Ooh, looks like we got a 404. It might not be do a system control status organizer. It looks like it's running. Oh, it tried to get me to go to slash subscribe. That might have been why. I'm not sure why I did that, but deleting that. There we go. There's organizer. Here's the setup wizard. I can go ahead and log in and get set up with that. So that's how you install HomeLab OS on your server. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Um, if you have any trouble, you can join us in the Zulip chat that we have set up. We have over 300 members in there. Or on our subreddit, where there's over 500 members on the subreddit. Uh, big shout out to all our contributors on this release, the 0 0.7 release. Over 50 new services uh, with over 40 new contributors. It's been great. Lots of activity going on in the project. So if you want to
be a part of that. Jump on in the chat, jump on in the subreddit, and uh, we'll see you there. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.